Hello, third grade. It's Miss Blanchfield. I thought that I would test out a, um, a painting tutorial video with you guys, with third grade. So no one else has seen these yet, but we're at my house. I have my camera set up above me here and I have everything I need for painting. So uh, these are the paints that I normally use. I'm using my watercolor set here and I have all my brushes here. Of course, you probably won't have all this stuff. And if you don't even have paints, we'll figure out a way for you to do this. I'll talk to you about it while I'm making the painting for us. So for this, you're gonna need a piece of paper. You're gonna need a black crayon. If you don't have a black crayon, you can use a dark color like a dark blue or a brown, um, but definitely a crayon. So you're gonna need a paintbrush and something round to trace. I'm using one of these jar lid things for um, you know jars of jelly or things like that. So anything about this big that's round for you to trace. Um, if you don't have paints, you can use markers for this or you can use color crayons or color pencils. We'll just make it work and have some fun. So um, you don't have to do this, but I just wanted you to see this. Before I start painting any of my paintings, I take a little spray mist and I get some of my paints wet ahead of time. This is what professional watercolor artists do. And I just thought I'd share that with you because you may have never seen that before. Um, oh, also I forgot, you're gonna need a bucket of water. So I have over here, I have a big jug of water and I like to use a little towel, but you could use a paper towel or a rag or something to wipe your brush on. Okay, so here we go, let's start. First, what I want you to do is put your paper in this horizontal position like this. Like this is called landscape or horizontal. When you have it this way, it's called portrait or vertical. So we're going this way. Take your round object and let's put it down here in the, in the right, leaving a little space from, away from the edges. And I want you to just take your crayon and trace around that. A lot of times in class we use a pencil first and then I have you go over it with crayon but since you're at home I'm gonna do it this way okay so that's our first piece by the way we're gonna be doing um, a bowl of fruit so I think you may have already watched or looked at some of the other videos that I posted on the assignment but this is gonna be a bowl of fruit so here's a piece of fruit I'm gonna say they're apples next I want to start with a line that goes across the page like this this is gonna be my bowl I'm going to bring it down like this. So this guy is outside of the bowl. So I'm going to pretend that I'm tracing past that apple and then continue my bowl up that way. If you want, you can have a little thing down here, which is sort of the bottom of the bowl. Okay, now we'll get back to having this piece right here. Let's put some fruit inside of the bowl. So. Um, you can see that I'm overlapping this line because the part of the fruit is inside the bowl. So all I'm going to do is trace the top like this. Okay. And then let's do another one. Maybe this one is going to be behind. This is going to be the front guy. So let's do another one that's behind. Whenever the object is behind, we don't need to trace the whole thing. We're only going to trace part of it. So like that. So see how it makes it look like it's behind the other guy? Okay, I'm gonna put another one here. Let's have this one a little bit of, I left a little space. And this guy is gonna go here like this. Okay, remember I didn't bring it down here because it's inside the bowl. And let's have one more here. And all I have to trace on this one is just this little section here because this piece of fruit is behind all the others. So I have one, two, three, four, five apples and a bowl. Now, you need to do a line like this so that it shows that it's sitting on a table. So I'm gonna, I did that line and I'm gonna pretend to go across here so it's kind of even and have the line come out this side. So now you have a bowl of apples on the table. We need to add some stems. And when you look at an apple where the stem comes out, there's kind of like a little dent in the fruit. So we're gonna create a little dent by going like this, and then here comes the stem. 
Okay, and let's do some in different directions too, so they're not all pointing the same way. Here's one here, and it's going to come up off the edge of the fruit. And maybe this guy is like this. And how about if we have this apple right here kind of looking right at us almost? So I did a whole circle on that one, and we really are looking down into the dent there. And let's do one more here like that. Okay, so now you can put your crayon aside. Oh, I changed my mind. Don't put it aside yet. Let's do a little, um, let's do a stripe or a decoration on the bowl. So I'm going to do another line. It's going to be a, a stripe that goes across the bowl. If you want, you can put something like X's in it or a zigzag. Just something to jazz it up a little bit. Okay, all right, so now we're ready to paint. We're gonna do all the fruits first. And um, I put underneath one of the other pictures on your assignment a, um, a color wheel so that you could remember which colors are next to each other on the color wheel because that's gonna be part of how you're gonna paint this. I'm gonna start with red. Again, if you're using crayons or markers or color pencils, please start with red. So I got some red paint on my brush and I'm going to paint the lower part of this piece of fruit, this apple here. I'm only painting the lower part because I'm gonna paint the top a different color and you'll see what I mean as we go along. Okay, so here's this guy right here. I hope you're having fun at home. I hope you are enjoying your pets or having some nice breakfasts at home where you don't have to rush off to school. But we miss you. Okay, so I did a little bit of red on each apple. Now I'm gonna rinse out my brush, and if you remember from the color wheel, orange is right next to red. So, I'm gonna get some orange. Can you see on here how I'm really kind of working the water in to get, the, get a lot of nice juicy paint? Okay, so these are all still wet. So now watch what happens. If you paint the orange on here, and it touches the red while the red is still wet, now we have Kind of a mixture. Isn't that neat how it mixes like that? So we're gonna do, whoops, we're gonna do a couple of those that way. Let's put a little orange on this one. You're gonna say orange apples. Apples aren't orange, but in the end they aren't gonna look orange. They're gonna look red. Put some here. Red with yellow, maybe. Maybe we'll see even if we can get somebody to have a little green on here. I don't know. And how about a little bit there? Okay, rinse out my brush again. What's next to orange on the color wheel? Yellow. Okay, so I'm getting a lot of nice juicy yellow. I'm gonna come down here and let's put some yellow on this apple. See how it blends together because that the orange that I put down before is still wet. And so those two colors kind of blend together. If you were doing this with crayons, you can just overlap the colors and and it'll look like a blend. It's a little bit harder to do with markers, but we're all just doing our best with what we have here. So don't worry. Okay, I always like to rinse my brush in between so that I don't get my yellow paint all messed up with other colors. Okay, sometimes it, the paint that you already put down might have dried right here. My red was a little dry, that's okay. We're just having fun. Okay, do you think we should have some green? I think we should try a little bit of green. I'm gonna go for this green right here. I have to be a little careful because if my green touches the, the red, it's gonna look a little bit brownish. So I'm just trying to have the green only touch where the yellow was. And here I'm gonna put it down in that, in that dent on the apple. 
Remember, if you need to, rinse your brush in between. If it gets dirty, you can rinse it. Let's do some green up on this guy. I'm going to rinse my brush a little bit. Okay. And how about green also right on this one? I think I'm not going to put green on all of them because I'm afraid that it's going to mix and make weird colors. So I rinsed my brush out a little bit. Come back and kind of fix that guy up. Okay, so we have two apples left. Let's just put yellow on those. Okay, all right, now we have all of our apples done. Let's do the bowl. How about you choose whatever color you want for the bowl, but be careful right here where the apples are still wet if your whatever paint you choose is also going to be wet, if it if this I have purple, if this wet purple touches right up against that apple, those colors are going to bleed together, mix together. So you may want to just stay inside. Just be careful and stay inside the line so that your uh, black crayon kind of acts as a a barrier or a boundary, or it blocks the purple from going up in there. So I'm being really careful to not get that purple in where the other paint is still wet. See right here, I'm just being really careful. Whoops, whoop, here we go. And if you have to leave a little tiny white gap, it might be okay. See right here, there's a little white that might be kind of interesting at the end of your painting, so I'm okay with leaving a little white there. I don't want to forget this piece of the bowl here. And now, my stripe. I want to do another color for that. I'm going to pick blue. I wonder what you'll pick. I'm looking forward to seeing these. You can um, ask your parents if it's easier. They can send me a photo in an email. Take a picture with their phone or something and send it in an email, or you could submit it inside of Google Classroom. Do you see right here where that blue mixed in? That's just because the blue was wet and the purple was wet and they mixed together. The last thing we have to do is the table. Um, so you can make your table any color. It can be brown, like a brown table, or maybe you have a tablecloth or something, or maybe your table is gray or whatever color you think. So I'm gonna make mine brown. Again, trying to keep this wet paint away from any other wet paint so that the colors don't mix together in a way that I don't like. There we go. Need a little more water. Did you notice while I was painting this that I'm always kind of pulling my brush? I'm not scribbling and scraping with my brush. That's really bad for the brush and it'll wear it out over time. I'm just pulling it. It's kind of like you brush your hair a certain direction or comb your hair. You don't comb it the opposite way. Same with this. Okay, and there's my painting. I'm all done. Let it dry. Uh, don't forget, sign your name because artists sign their name on their work and I'm excited to see your pictures soon. So I hope you enjoy this and have a great day. Bye.